we have a quick sponsorship message and that message is for the 21 day challenge and if you are an entrepreneur or a high achiever and you're committed to achieving your next level being your greatest possible self getting unstuck if you feel like you've been spinning your wheels you're just not satisfied with your level of growth or achievement then 21 day challenge might be a perfect fit for you what will happen is over the period of 21 days you will set a target and you will get all the support that you need to achieve that target we'll have daily check-ins making sure that you're on track with your goal weekly deep dive calls to make sure that you are un unprogramming deprogramming the limiting beliefs and giving you all the support that you need to achieve that 21 day challenge goal good or good if that sounds interesting to you it is not for everyone but if it is for you if it does sound good to you send me a message or an email at chris Chris at BeYourGPS.com, or you can send it to Facebook, facebook.com forward slash TH3Burn. Send me a message. would love to hear if you feel like it's a good fit for you. I'll send you an intake form, and then we'll go from there. So thanks in advance for that interest, and I look forward to helping you with your 21-day challenge. Next is the iTunes review of the week, and that is by Luna Goon. Luna Goon says, value packed, taking you to new heights. Chris is an incredible interviewer. He is super smart, silly, and has a gigantic heart of gold. He genuinely cares for his fans and bends over backwards to deliver high-end value for everyone he meets. This is a must listen. I recommend making time for it every week. Thanks, Chris, for your continued contributions. So Luna Goon, thank you so much for giving us that review. And if you want to give us a review on iTunes, go to beyourgps.com forward slash iTunes, and you can do that there. And just let us know about your thoughts, what you're loving the most about the show, and uh, you know anything you want to change, anything you want to update, anything that you feel could really take it to the next level, just let us know. We're happy to listen, happy to, to hear those. Now, for the woman of the hour, Denise Alexander Pyle, a native and longtime resident of suburban Detroit, now living in Indiana, has been a family law attorney for over 41 years. Back in 1990, Denise taught Sunday school to 15-year-olds at a Reformed Jewish temple in Michigan where the emphasis of the curriculum was Judeo-Christian ethics and living the Ten Commandments in modern times. The latter topic has been a several decade-long passion, which culminated in her book entitled The Power of Gen, or of Ten, A Guide to Living the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule in Modern Times. The zero is up in parentheses because she believes that even without the Ten Commandments, we all have the golden rule to, sh to guide us as the underlying principle for all we do. Her premise is that if we peeled back the layers and understood the meaning of each of the Ten Commandments on multiple levels, we would truly recognize that they are the rules for the road for peaceful coexistence and ultimately a path to living a life filled with joy. Denise tries to incorporate these principles in her life. Community and public service are important to her. She has served as a planning as planning as a planning commissioner for two different communities, a councilwoman, and on several nonprofit and professional boards. In 2007, she received the Circle of Hope Award for her service to care house of oakland county michigan serving families and victims of child abuse so denise is about to come on and rock it and just so you know we have such amazing amazing connection we had an amazing pre-interview call where we got to know each other even more and i met denise i believe it was back at, at the new media summit she can we could talk about that and just keep diving in so everyone please give a warm welcome for miss denise alexander pile denise you ready to rock this I'm ready to rock it, Chris, and thank you for having me here on your show. Absolutely, absolutely. My pleasure. You are now live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self. Welcome to the show, and we're going to dive right into the theme of the day, which is calling in your creations. And calling in your creations means like you, you attract what you desire. You get clear on what you want. You speak it into existence, that kind of thing. So, Denise, how has this principle or, or concept played a role in your life? How has it made a difference for you? I've always been one who says, be careful what you wish for, because whatever I put out there seems to happen. <laughs> so, so, yes, you know, but it's really about having a positive attitude yeah. and taking what you have. And if it's a lemon, turning it into a lemonade. Mm. I mean, I'm a person who sees the glass half full. I take my talents. I know I'm here to be a problem solver. And here I am been pro solving everybody's problems for over 41 years. Wow. 
That's awesome. Awesome. I love it. I love the the passion of, you know, how do you just show up being of service? How do you show up giving your gifts back to the world? And like you said, you've been doing this for a long time and we want to know a little bit more about that. We're going to hear about your journey in a second, but just tell our audience for anyone who's just getting connected with you a little bit more about you so that they can know who is Denise. Well, I grew up Jewish. Um, and so that was my you know, religious education, but I've been a new age seeker since I'm 14 when I mm. had my own little encounter of a third kind wow. and I've been reading and studying metaphysical and spirituality ever since I studied mm. Kabbalah. I'm married to a Quaker, so I go to church and I get some experiences. So I do accept Jesus in my life too, because wow. Christ consciousness is the bridge of love. Mm. So I try to, I describe myself as a new way Jew. I try to bring it all together because at the end of the day, we're all one. Mm, yes, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I do agree that we are all one. We all come from the same source. And when we put aside our differences, when we put aside, you know, that the the separation or the illusion of separation, then we can really show up in service to our fellow man. We can accomplish more. We can love more. We can enjoy this journey of life more. So I 100 percent agree with that part. So let's go back into the journey. Let's talk about how you got to where we are today with this with this philosophy, writing the, the book and and, and a little bit more about that, you know. So let's let's take us back to the journey. What were some of the things that you had to overcome or or challenges on the journey of being the Denise of today? All right. Well, first of all, when I was in high school, my sister got divorced and moved back into our home and kicked me out of my bedroom my senior year as wow. my parents were there to rescue my sister. And from someone who then wanted to be a writer, because we had no lawyers in our family. Mm. I became the person who became interested in law. And from the time forward, I went to college with the intent to be a divorce attorney wow. and to help others because we had no one to really guide and help us. Mm. So that was the first obstacle. Now, it took me three times to get my marriage right. And I think my experiences gave me the empathy to really understand what my clients were going through. And actually having a wonderful husband who has my back gives me the goal for my clients of what they want in their life as mm. opposed to what they've settled for in their life. So that's part of it. Um, service, I was a class officer when I was in junior high and high school. So I've mm. always been about leadership and trying to make things you know, go the way they're supposed to go. It, mm. It's probably in my DNA. I think I'm an intergalactic warrior who's come here to help bridge us to the next evolution of mankind. And I, I, I feel that way. Yes. That's yes. How I live my life. I love it. I love it. So, so awesome because. I believe when people see that they have the potential to make that impact in the world, whether it's you know one person at a time or millions of people at a time, when we step up to that to that calling, to that responsibility, to that gift that we've been given to make a difference and share our joy, our love, our light, our beliefs, our wisdom with others, then the the whole world becomes a better place. So I love that you say that you you've, you've been born with that gift. <laughs> Well, and the awareness. I mean, I had my insecurities like everybody else. Yep. And I think, you know, are they a curse or are they a blessing? And in my mm. case, they inspired me to to succeed. And, mm. you know, so to me, I think that was my motivation. I was smart. I was lucky that came school came naturally to me. But I, I've always been a giving person. I, you know, I you can divide the world if, if you want to be negative into givers and takers. Mm. And, you know, if two givers come together, they do great things. Yeah. If a giver and a taker come together, um, one's going to be you know, always feeling like, you know, they're at the you know back end of the deal. Mm -hmm. And two takers come together, don't last very long, <laughs> you know, <laughs> unless they find a way to take others. But I mean, and, <laughs> You know, and that's sadly, but that's the point. We are givers, and our planet needs more givers now yeah. to show the way we need to be because we are stewards for this yeah. planet, for the next generations after us. Everything is borrowed. You mm. can't take it with you. You can use it. We can't abuse it. And so, therefore, we really have an obligation to – you know, make sure that our my grandchildren have a beautiful planet and not destroy our oceans, our our food supply, mm. and each other. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's fascinating because 
I, I don't think I've ever seen it like this as, you know, each generation, it's almost like without, without people, there would be animals, there would be, you know, animals and, and plants and stuff. They would, they, they kind of do their own thing. They're naturally creating the environment, shifting the environment. And then mother nature, so to speak, shifts the environment on, on its own. But as human beings, we have this power of, of creation, of choice, of, you know, taking something from an idea and bringing it into reality. And like we were put here to be, like, I love how you said that we were put here to be stewards of this earth to our next generations. And it's like and how, yeah. We're co-creators with God. That yes. is the first commandment. Mm. And recognizing that that is our gift. But, and that's why I say the 10 commandments is how we choose to do it in light mm. and do it right. Because everything is balanced. There's feminine, masculine in all of us. There's good and bad in all of us. Mm -hmm. So how do we discern to do the right thing? And that's why I think the Ten Commandments are sort of the rule for the road to keep us choosing the pathway that brings us joy and contentment in our own life. Beautiful. You, know, when you talk about nature. The answer to everything you ever wanted to know can be found in nature. Mm. I learned that from the movie The Air Up There with Kevin Bacon. Mm. But, you know, one of the things, look at a beaver, look at a river. A river runs through it, and everybody along the riverbank takes a drink of the river, and it feeds all the life along the river. If you block the river and hoard it, everything downstream dies mm -hmm. if you don't share it. Now, beavers might dam a river, but guess what? All the animals move around the lake he creates and creates their own village. Mm -hmm. We have too many people who are blocking the river but not creating the village to spread it around for everybody wow. to contribute to it yeah man that's, that's such a prime example i love it and let's let's get into what the the power of the 10 commandments is and you know the specific reason about why you created the book what what made you want to create the book and then just tell tell us more about it well basically it was in my opinion, it was channeled to me. I didn't create the book. Mm -hmm. um, God or Source sent it to me. I sat at a computer over four weekends back in 2010, and this long sermon came out. You know, I could have been Esther Hicks, you know, yep. doing the uh, channel. Yep. But then it sat there waiting for me to have the time to put it in a way that it resonated with people reading it. The sound mm -hmm. bites, the messages, the inspirational notes within it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter what level you read the book, it's for everybody. You can look yeah. at it on a simple basis. I've had friends who've studied multi-religions for years. They say, this book is really deep and complex. I have to look at it. <laughs> and I laugh because it's meant to be very simple. But it peels the commandments to show what they are on a physical level here, but at mm. a metaphysical level, how oh. energy works within the Ten Commandments too. Mm. I love it. I love it. No, this is juicy. I love this conversation because if we can learn to to understand our, our reality, to understand how to have a better life, a more fulfilling life, understand the laws of the universe, the the mechanics, the physics, the the how things work, then we can operate with that knowledge, with the awakened self of, hey, I know that this this doing this causes this result, which I think a lot of people either don't know or pretend like they don't know, causing them to, you know, like really receive rewards or punishment that they didn't want in the first place. So let's talk about what the book says. Let's go over, you know, the Ten Commandments if you want to dive into that to just give us the the view that you you take on it and, you know, literal and then the view that you take on it and what you want people to like really know from from each of these. Um, if I can drill down them real quickly, I think that's the easiest way to give an overview. Sure. So starting with I am the Lord your God, the first commandment, it's really about our connection with source, ourselves and each other. Mm. It's God, you know, it's the real Trinity that we are of God and we are part of God. We are individual threads, beautiful, luminous fibers within the tapestry of the universe. And therefore, because we are part of God, we have to love ourselves. We love God. Mm -hmm. We love ourselves. We love each other. And we respect God. We respect mm -hmm. ourselves and, res and each other. And all the ways in which you love and respect yourself and God are part of this commandment. And mm -hmm. um, then you go to have no other gods before me. There's a reason this commandment is number two, not to worship false 
idols mm. because when we get stuck with the material things and somebody else telling us what we should honor more, you know, that their God, their, their opinion matters more than ours. Mm. That's when we get away from really looking at the, listening to the voice inside of mm. who we are in our connection with source. It takes us away from source as opposed to being in gratitude and service which is really what you are when you honor you know, God as number one and not have mm. false idols. Yeah. Um, do not misuse the name of God. To me, that's about assuming responsibility and, and trying to create peace and coexistence instead of divide and conquer, particularly mm. in the name of God. Wow. And look at our growth. Wow. Um, keeping the Sabbath holy, that's wow. the fourth commandment because that's about where we take our time out to detach, look at what we've created, mm. uh, reflect on what the past week has been, what did we do good, what didn't we do well that we mm. want to change, how do we meditate to get in touch with our inner voice, how do we keep sacred space mm. and create time for our family and what's important, mm. and, and ultimately why do we pray with a group? Because as I learned in masterminding, as well as in religion, there's power in the many. And when mm. you put out prayers, if you mastermind what you want to create in your life with other people and each pray on each other's dreams, they multiply. That's mm. the nature of the universe. So that's that commandment. Um, honor the, your mother and your father. That's mm. really about you know, the masculine and feminine and everything, it's the God life and Mother mm -hmm. Earth is the nurturer, it's wow. the source. Wow. It's about um, learning from our elders and mm -hmm. honoring them, but also how we teach the next generation. It's mm -hmm. about balance. It's yeah. really about recognizing that it takes all of us in our positive and mass and negative aspects and mm. finding the way that it blends so that we are the best we can be in all aspects. And, you know, in the Jewish religion, interestingly enough, if you have a parent who others would agree is not honorable, you're actually supposed to um, say a prayer for them for an extra month. And I always think that it's about anchoring the fact that you want to do better and that mm. you want to pray for their soul and you want to learn a lesson, not only because everything is a positive and a negative. So mm -hmm. you have to look at everything from both sides. Um, do not kill. It's to me, it's not just about you know taking the life of somebody you know mm. without cause. It's about our thoughts create, our words create, our mm. actions create. So therefore we have to be careful that we don't kill somebody else's dreams, their thoughts, their desires by how we interrelate with them and that we don't kill our own. We're mm. here to create, to find beauty, to nurture. It's about giving life to ourselves. Mm. That's the first commandment that goes into how do we live in the day-to-day -day world. And the first thing you do is to live and create and take your talents and put them out there. Uh, do not commit adultery. You know, it's not just, it's about really looking at the promises we make to ourselves, mm. to each other, and honoring those promises. Don't make promises you know you can't keep mm. because it's about building trust and relationships. And it takes courage. And my words for that are commitment and courage because it's when you can follow through in, the, in what you do for yourself, just like your 21-day course where you tell people, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to help give you positive reinforcement back and help you. That's honoring the commitments you make to yourself. Yes. That's this commandment. Um, do not steal. Oh, my. I mean, that commandment. We steal not just something. You know, people think, oh, I don't, wouldn't go in a store and take something. The way our planet right now, our gen as we look around us, is using and abusing the resources. We are stealing hmm. what is a lifeblood for generations to come after us. I mean, on a major level. Yeah. You know, when people take somebody else's idea and sell it as their own, hmm. they're stealing. But this is about justice in the world and charity and integrity. Hmm. This is how we, you know, we create balance. Because I believe, like in nature, there ain't no such thing as a free lunch. Everything is an exchange of value, you know, and 
and therefore when you when you give value back to somebody it's a nice exchange and that's part of not stealing don't take from somebody without you know trying to give them something it doesn't have to be something of of monetary value hmm. but of yourself your heart yeah. um you know do not bear false witness this is about you know don't spread gossip don't spread the fake media whichever point of view you come from hmm. it's about being in your integrity at all times speaking truth and learning how to speak kind truth to people who may not want to hear the truth hmm. and most of all being honest to yourself yeah. you know and and really being and don't judge, but don't judge yourself so harshly that you can't forgive yourself because mm. forgiveness is implicit in mm. all of the commandments you yeah. can always draw the line like you do when you have a several gutter balls play going bowling and say i'm going to get a strike the next one it's a new day every mm. day is a new day and then you know do not covet your neighbor's belongings it's really about learning to be in your own life your own journey we each have our own path Yeah. And so if you're looking at what somebody else has in their backyard, material-wise or otherwise, you can't find contentment and joy in your own life. Mm. So these are kind of how I drill. And then the golden rule, you know, you know, how you do unto others, you know, you you do unto yourself or how you would like to be done to you, you do unto your others. It all mm. presumes you love yourself. Mm. And that's really it's about self-love. But we can all tap into the oneness and intuition when mm. we come from a place of love. Yeah. So Beautiful. those are my view I of the commandments. I love it. I love it. And, and it's like it's cool because I think so many people are looking for for a new solution, a new way to do things, a new like like what we have is not enough, right? And I think it comes from this place of insecurity and and not enoughness. And and your position is, hey, like we already have this amazing tool and this amazing framework. Like let's put it to work. Let's utilize it in a way that doesn't um, s separate people, but rather brings people together. That's rather like, hey, you know, anyone anywhere can use this in the world, and you can even apply it to like whatever it is that you're already doing just put it on top you know just start seeing the world through this start practicing these these values these um, principles to be able to live an amazing life they were given to us for a reason yeah and whether you believe Moses got them directly from God on Mount Sinai mm. or were actually a lower life form and a higher life form came to our planet to help us evolve along on mm. our journey here They were given to us because they were. They were a guide. They are the rules for the road. It is a handbook for humanity. And we just haven't, we've been ignoring it because we looked at it through the examples that were written 4,000 years ago instead mm. of looking at them through a different lens. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. So what do you think it would take, Denise, for, for everyone to want to start using these and utilizing these and living these and meditating on them and masterminding about them? What, what would that take? It would take all the light workers out there with their messages coming together and really um, creating an aha moment that everybody mm. taps into. I mean, that's what it really takes. I talked about it. We need this shine on the world movement where we all light up together in terms of our essence to mm. say, doesn't this feel much better? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, beginning to apply these to our lives, let's like start start diving into the specific ways that we can start utilizing these and, and how you would recommend we best apply these these commandments, these 10 commandments, the golden rule and, you know, your mission, like share your, your mission with us to be able to step into that so that we can s step alongside with you and, and come with you into this new future. Well, in my book, at the end of each chapter, I try to put in what I call commitments, mm -hmm. just really basic, simple exercises and questions to ask ourselves, and then, you know, things we can do to, you know, anchor the principle into our life. So, mm -hmm. for example, you know, um, looking in our closets to see the things that we, that no longer serve us and donating them away. And, you know, I have a friend who says every time she buys one thing new, she gives away five things because mm. more is, yeah. is not necessarily more. Sometimes less is more. Yeah. Um, it's looking at, 
you know, the th things that, for example, with jealousy, mm -hmm. what is it you envy that somebody else has? You know, answer the question honestly. Why do you want it? Why do you envy it? Mm -hmm. um, would it bring joy to your life? What gifts do you have that you aren't looking at that you want to share? Take an inventory. What are your talents? What do you love to do? Write them down. Start really asking yourself questions. Yeah, you know, for Sabbath, do I make time? Okay, I'm going to set aside 20 minutes on a Saturday to start to mm. do nothing more than meditate. You know, the kinds of things that just really start you on a path of, um, you know, bringing these things, these principles into your life. You, it doesn't take a lot. It takes one step and building on each step because everything increases exponentially. It's finding things that give you joy mm. and spending your time. Do what you love and everything else follows. Yeah, that's right. Wow, so so beautiful. And I think that there's there's people who are already doing things like this. So for the some for the person who says, you know, I'm already living a pretty good life. Like what why do I gotta, you know, take all this time and, and start focusing on these ten commandments? I'm already doing pretty good. Well, what do you I say think to them? you want to look at it in terms of the integrity of what you're doing. Mm. Because the question is, are you really in service to someone else? Because there's mm. a lot of very wealthy people who've made lots of money, but what, at, at a cost to whom? Mm. And, you know, and that's the balance that why people feel there's such division between the haves and the have-nots, mm. because it's about abundance with integrity. It's about you know, the magnificent obsession, which was the more you put out with love without, you know, and with humility, without the expectation of something in return, I believe the more you actually get. Yes. But the question is, it's why is there this, you know, hoarding mentality mm. of, and you know, people, and I'm not saying people aren't philanthropic, mm. but I don't think they look at, at who they've injured or may have harmed, or what they have harmed, and what they've taken. And that's the thing that we are not analyzing because, you know, we aren't in balance that way. That's why, you know, the lawsuits against, you know, certain companies today, because of the, the harm they're doing to individuals in our food supply. And, and you know, and it's those things that are really what people are upset about and they don't think they can fix. Mm. But if we all held each other accountable to the standards of the Ten Commandments, mm. now society won't tolerate that mm. kind of behavior. You know, mm. when I grew up, and I'm a lawyer, so when I grew up, there was something called law and equity. And mm. judges could do equity. They could balance the scales of justice when people did things that weren't morally right. I've watched over 40 plus years as our laws have been rewritten on a state, local, and federal level mm -hmm. to legalize what a judge would never have allowed to be morally done years ago. That's clearly not living the Ten Commandments. That's the greed and ego side that we feel are um, making us feel small and not able to accomplish what we're here to do because mm. we see this and we feel impotent to do anything about it. But if we all started living by a standard of, you know, what is really acceptable, then they, people couldn't do these things. And that's the magic of us lighting up the planet because now, you know, there's a saying when the light goes on, the cockroaches scurry into the wood, into the woodwork. Yep. Well, time that we shine a light on what isn't in integrity for our planet mm. because it is an integrity in our own lives. One person doing it, it's contagious, a planet doing it, and the lights are going to be very bright for a long time. Yeah. I need mean, to help bring us to that point in, in the universe where we right. evolve to that's the right. next highest level in the planet. Yeah. And, you know, look at a garden back to nature. You know, occasionally, if you let a garden go untended, the weeds are going to strangle out the flowers. Mm. And I hate to say it, there. You know, we have to look at it. It is balance. It's nature, mm. and we can create and we can change the way the world fun functions in a positive, loving way. 
first by our life. Do your own life first. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's the biggest thing is being the example. Um, you know, I, I I saw when I created the the show, becoming your greatest possible self. I created the name. I I got confronted by everything that wasn't that in my own life. And I think that people might be facing that confrontation when, when it comes to like living these 10 commandments, you know, it's like these, these standards are, are, are what is in our best and highest good, but it takes growth. It takes challenging the unconscious automatic patterns to get back into alignment with that. We're not perfect. And if you think you're going to be perfect at all times and that, and that, and do it and not all the time, No, human nature isn't, you know, we have both the light and dark sides of ourselves. We have something called an ego, Uh and as long as the ego is there, it's about taming the ego. And sometimes the ego will win. So again, you have to forgive yourself. That's what forgiveness is all about. We are going to make mistakes. We aren't going to live it all the time. But if we do it, but if we act in integrity, more often than we don't, right. and we try to do better the next time. There's a reason that people practice religion, mm. because, you know, nobody really gets it right. And how many um, monks in a monastery have, you know, will tell you that they are living in perfection. No, we're all here to evolve together. So mm. don't don't say you're going to be perfect. I'm certainly not. I try. I can give you examples every day where I can do better. Yeah. I mean, I have a plastic bottle sitting on my desk with water in it and when I have a glass bottle. But my glass bottle, God, I couldn't clean it anymore. It got funky inside. So until I find something else. So you, you know, yeah. so I see where I can do better. Mm. You know, but but it's, it's a willingness. There's a willingness to look for you. You're like, hey, what could I do differently? And you're constantly, like, like you said, the, the Sabbath and keeping that one day holy, the point of reflection, the point of rest, the point of like zooming out and saying, how am I doing? It's something that is missing from a lot of people's lives because they're just so go, go, go on on this hamster wheel of life. But if we simply had these present and in front of us, we could make better choices because we remember rather than being unconscious about, hey, we've already been given this framework. Okay, I don't know how to do life or I'm going to make these stupid decisions even though I know that I shouldn't be making them. But it's always it's all the way in the back. So it's easier to make bad decisions when you're not present to wait what am i supposed to be following here to checking back in with those guidelines absolutely my book is short because i intended it to sit on your nightstand and be something that you could just you know um check in with on a regular basis and not be intimidating it's Mm. meant to be you know a quick reference i come up with um i'm going to do some confirmation cards to mm-hmm. anchor in the message that I I said when I went through them. Yes. I also have a one-page affirmation that I've written that really um, takes the the book and, in its essence, drills it down to one page mm. as a positive affirmation to go forward, just so that we can just constantly be reminded yeah. that every day you're gonna you're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna hurt somebody unintentionally, mm. you're going to do things, and you just you know. Ask, forgive yourself, ask for forgiveness from them, love yourself, love them, and move on. Hmm. And you know, do better the next time. Wow, beautiful. So I, one of the things I want to know is like why we're, we're doing, we're, we're sharing this. We're sharing this information for the people who, who want to hear it, and we know it's needed. We know that the world could be improved. But why is it urgent that we get this message out as quickly as possible? Because every day it appears the world seems to be going further and further from coming together. Everybody's so f- afraid that you know we're going to destroy each other. There are some who are even praying for it because they think that's the deliverance. My view of you know we are crossing an abyss. We are at a critical time in history. But I believe in a positive outcome. I believe that we're going to shift. And the negativity will not be tolerated. Hmm. You know, we may go through some, you know, tough changes to get there. Right. But I'm hoping to get the message to minimize the negative period yes. of getting there, so that we can get there with in the best possible way. So that, as you say, we can all become 
the highest, or as I write, to be the best version of ourselves in this lifetime. Yes, this yes. What and thought. and what's amazing, what's amazing is we have this um, technology, right? Like stellar technology, podcasting. We have media. We have all these different ways to get messages out to people. Now it's all about how do we align the the people and and present it to them and inspire them and enroll them so that they can share it. Which I I'm 100% behind. I'm so grateful that that we're doing this right now. Well, it's so hard because you can go online and find anything you want to believe in and mm. you'll find support for it. Yeah. And so discernment and being really in line with your self and in, in communicate for that inner voice in yourself, does this really resonate? Mm. You know, and having a benchmark to compare it against. Yeah. I mean, that's what's Mac, you know, we need that um, tool that says, okay, how does this relate to these particular items mm. so that I can have better discernment of what really makes sense. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So you, you mentioned that there's, you, you studied the Bible and then also the, the Kabbalah and there's these kind of two different, um, schools of thought and, and, uh, spirituality and religion and stuff like that. How does that all work? And tell us a little bit more about the Kabbalah for anyone who doesn't know. But for anybody who doesn't know, um, Kabbalah is the ancient Jewish wisdom mm -hmm. that explains the eternal laws of the um, how the spiritual energy moves from the universe to Earth. It's mm -hmm. basically quantum physics, for, <laughs> and it was in the Bible. Nothing yeah. is that new. We think we're as evolved, but trust me, Kabbalah is quantum physics. It's mm -hmm. the structure of the universe. And it's depicted by the Tree of Life in a Jacob's Ladder kind of design. Mm -hmm. And there are spheres for each of the, um, on the tree of life. And there are actually 10 that are identified and one that's sort of the invisible, sort of the golden rule of the tree of life, because mm -hmm. it, it means knowledge and intuition. So mm -hmm. how, what better, it's the oneness that is the invisible sphere. But each of them has an attribute that depicts our journey from heaven down to earth. Mm -hmm. And they follow a pattern and they have a Hebrew word that is the attribute. And I looked and saw after I studied Kabbalah that they really overlay each of the Ten Commandments as the Ten Commandments go from the highest commandment, which is our connection mm -hmm. with God, down to our, you know, living our life here on the planet. Mm -hmm. And that that's not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all called the Tree of Life. For a reason, because it is the metaphysical meaning of the Ten Commandments is embodied in the tree of life. Wow. That's incredible. Yeah, that's amazing. So they gave a a pictorial example of how, how it all works and how we can can integrate it and visualize it even more and have a different way to see it so that we can be able to live it more. Is that is that why you think they did it? So that people could understand it at more of as like a metaphor kind of thing? Absolutely. And again, in a, up until um, at least the you know, time of Jesus, mm -hmm. only very studied um, scholars can, could be, have access to the Kabbalah. Just mm -hmm. like any ancient mysticism, you have to have pretty good self-discipline to deal with magical powers because mm -hmm. they have a dark side and you have to have your intentions must be pure. Mm. Look at Star Wars. It's not the movie, the dark side. There's, I mean, that's just a principle of the universe. Yeah. But I believe that actually Jesus, when he came to teach love and shift the perception of the, of the population at that time, he took the principles that were in the Kabbalah mm -hmm. and put them into the New Testament in a different way because he believed that people needed to have that direct connection, but in a very simplified form. So there are those who believe the New Testament really takes a lot of the principles of the Kabbalah and applies them to the masses, but not, you know, again, on a very universal way, not, and it's however deep you want to get to drill down the layers and see through the onion, mm -hmm. you, you can see the depth because, you know, our, what we see on this planet is far from what exists. You know, mm. There are multiple dimensions that we have only begun to see, and science and religion are coming together as they really prove one another. Yeah, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. So 
there's there's these advancements that people are are sharing about and and you know I think a lot of people even study this stuff and and write about it and speak about it and talk about it. I'm curious what makes your perspective or view um, different or unique or why why you felt compelled to to share it in your way in your interpretation. Well, again, as I said, I think I was directed to do it, uh-huh. but more importantly. I think I wrote it in a way that regardless of where you're coming from, you will find truth in it. Truth Mm -hmm. is, and it's being able to drill down um, principles into a form that people can relate to. And I think that's something I always did well as an attorney. I've Mm -hmm. always been a good storyteller and able to describe or distill the truth and cut to the core of something. And that's why the book is short. It's really intended to cut to the core and give Mm -hmm. something simple to people to follow. But not everybody views it as simple because they see the layers. It just depends Mm -hmm. on how deep you want to get into it. It's something for everybody. It's a book that is um, being you know viewed in the spiritual bookstores, the metaphysical realm, as well in you know traditional religious bookstores. And to me, it's for everybody because mm. it's really meant to be just a universal message that no matter where you come from, I'm not. I think it's all the same. We all come together. I wrote it in a way that you can relate to it if you're coming from you know, a big C Christian perspective. You may not agree with everything I put in there, and I don't expect everybody to necessarily agree with every point, but they'll get the essence and agree with the essence of the book. Beautiful, beautiful. In a, in a perfect world, this message gets out to, to everyone in your lifetime, right? This book, the, these Ten Commandments, gets gets out to everyone in your lifetime. What does that look like, and what, what will it be like for you living in that world? What will you be most proud about um, that world? Just tell us more about that vision. Well, my vision is a world of peace and harmony and love and everybody you know, working together to uh, for our highest good that you know we have – Um, We tap into what I I believe there's technology out there that's all based on light and electromagnetic field that does, that is continually renewable. It's clean. I think crystals are part of that. Mm -hmm. And that we have this white light existence on the planet and that, you know, people are live longer because they're healthier and they're creating more with their thoughts. And there's very little need for governance other than when those people fall into darkness to help lead them back into the path or you know whatever needs to be done so that the weeds don't take over and strangle the garden and mm. and but to do it and find a way to do it in a loving supportive forgiving way mm. one other thing i'm i've always been curious about myself is like how do we know which which one is right? How do we know that light is quote unquote right and darkness is like wrong, so to speak, or that like we know we have both. We know we have both, um, but like once we get to this place of being being light, how do we know that it, it like that's gonna stay and maintain because that's what's in our highest and best good, rather than you know darkness taking over? And this is just well, like hypothetical. <laughs> It is balanced. Look at the universe collapses into dark holes. So maybe this is the pendulum we're supposed to be on. Uh-huh. But I think maybe we're going towards light now because we're coming out of darkness and yeah. this is our time to be in the light. Mm. So, you know, that would, and I'd rather, I like the vision of the light better. You know, I, I like to say there's a reason that oil was buried deep in the ground because it's done nothing good for the plant. It's moved us, yeah. but it's also. You know, it's had the dark side of everything. Everything has a shadow side. Yeah. It's how do you choose to not um, allow that that to hurt other people. And I think the mm-hmm. light is about love and how we embrace one another mm-hmm. as opposed to destroy. Everything dies. Everything mm-hmm. is a cycle. Right. We all have a we all have an expiration date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, at least fi- our physical bodies do. I like to think that our light doesn't. And it's the spark that will move on and create again somewhere else, Mm. whether it's in another body or in another universe. So, you know, it's nothing ever really gets destroyed. Mm. Wow. Amazing. And then I know you're on your book, on your book cover, you designed that artwork. Tell us more about that and, and that process for you. 
Well, it was two things. One, I wanted my book to depict the Ten Commandments as a theme, but not that it be a traditional religious book with the Ten Commandments. I think having the drawing of the Tree of Life divided to show the top five Spiro on one side and the bottom five the cor correlate with the other you know, five commandments on the cover showed that it was a meta had a me metaphysical meaning to it, that it was the Ten Commandments told in another way in both the spiritual, just the pure spiritual essence of it, as well as the literal meaning. So I wanted something that it would look and say, this is not your typical meaning of the Ten Commandments with a Kabbalah tree of life on the cover. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You've mentioned um, metaphysics multiple times throughout this. I'm curious, how do you integrate that, but still keep the book simple and digestible for everyone who wants to read it? Because I just reference it really very lightly. It's mm -hmm. really a book on simple truth, but it was more, again, I reference it so that um, people who are disillusioned with, you know, the, the divisiveness of mm -hmm. our you know, uh, organized religions today mm -hmm. will want to pick it up and still get the message and say, wow, this is a message that applies to everybody. I like this. There's a group here in Marion where I live now of women who are more metaphysical. They, you know, they were raised mostly Christian, but they're more metaphysical. They actually have a study group over my book right now. Wow. They're so funny because they love it. They feel it just has that universal message to it and it makes them feel good because they see Again, unity versus divisiveness. Hmm. Amazing, amazing. So you wrote this book, and do you see another book in your future? Do you think you'll expand upon this? Is it going to be in a different genre completely? <laughs> well, I have like three books percolating. It's just which one will emerge. Because doing this, I want to take the Ten Commandments and see if I can, you know, and apply it to governance, you know, hmm. how we govern is, and look at our institutions with personal attributes that they do have an ego i used to say government doesn't need to shrink it needs to shrink mm. um, that's one aspect i've as a divorce attorney i wanted to write a book the ten commandments of divorce how to end your marriage without sacrificing your soul mm. and then i have a, another book that's str strictly a magical story that's um, The Journey of the Violet Playing Crystal, which is actually a biographical spiritual adventure of what happened to me and where unexplained magic appeared in my life, um, including if I can show you a crystal that I have, this healing crystal. Yeah, yeah. This crystal was left on a table with Tibetan monks when they were in Aspen doing one of their sand paintings for healing. Yeah. And a few days later, it ended up back in my bed. And I cannot explain that other than it was Tibetan monks who probably have the ability to teleport something. But it had to do with another crystal and, and a great, great um, story of scavenger hunt of clues and messages and synchronicity with a bunch of people that led me to a wonderful, amazing weekend where I was involved in a healing ceremony for um, a Native American space that had a bad energy to it to help heal the energy. So it's just an amazing story. So I'm going to write that. Have to change the names, you know, to protect the guilty or innocent. But, right. uh, it's just a great story, and I and it was and it really is a story about magic in all of our mm. lives, how things manifest. Because even though I live in the real world, I practice law, I follow, you know, I live. And incorporate in the day in the mundane like everybody else i'm a grandma i love to cook i you know uh, i love to do things i also see the magic of the universe and mm. i and i don't think they're mutually exclusive wow i love that the mundane and the magic you have access to both <laughs> we all do but that's the point we all do yeah and, and unfortunately yes not everybody is given the same gifts to start out Right. So, and, you know, we all, and there are those who believe you choose your, you know, you have a sacred contract, you, you choose the path for the lessons you need to learn, mm. and therefore that's why your life might not be as blessed, it might be a payback for another life. I don't know what that is, or is it, you know, that's the truth I haven't been, you know, totally 
you know, know the answers to. I can have my opinions on them. Right, right. But I think we all are beautiful light beings, and it's how do we awaken the light. And those who, who haven't been blessed, those right. of us who have, if we can help shine a light on them, that's how we help heal them in this mm. lifetime. Amazing. Amazing. So that was an amazing, amazing, uh, you know, kind of beginning to wrap up, segue into the section. So let's let's get a, a final call to action and what we really want people to to receive from this interview, because it's been it's been incredible. I love how how you just share yourself, your life and you share these principles and concepts and your passion for it. And it's it's the truth, you know, these truths that we can operate by and have and live an amazing life, an amazing quality of life, while still being aware that sometimes we might not have amazing lives. Sometimes we might not have the most joy or the most abundance or whatever it might be, but by continuing to focus on these principles, they are our guiding rudder to live the best life possible. So let's start to, to give them a, a call to action on um, you know wrapping up what we talked about, and then we can go into the next steps. Well, I think everybody needs to, you know, find their their inner beauty and mm. that they are part of the magic of the universe they were created in the image of the, the source the universe god whatever you identify with you are a part of it you mm. are a luminous strand and you need to see your own beauty and mm. when you see your beauty you see the beauty of the person standing next to you and and support come together to create this wonderful fabric that we can create together mm -hmm. because in unity there is strength do not allow yourselves to be divided and conquered but come together in love and light and creativity because we mm -hmm. all have gifts we just have to look inside of us and see what they are and spread them and help educate each other because that those who don't have access to learn if we come across them then we have to help teach them too hmm. teach your children well that's right that's right and denise i'm sure people who are listening to this are loving you loving the message that you're sharing i'm loving it i know that and how do they stay connected with you moving forward uh denise alexander pyle p-y-l-e because mm -hmm. you know it's spelled like gomer pyle mm -hmm. dot com and you can find me there, and I would love to hear from you know your viewers and how I can help them, and how and I'm how I can help spread the message as wherever I can. Awesome, beautiful. So you heard it. Go to www.denisealexanderpile.com. Find Denise there. Send her a message. Let her know you you heard about her from this interview. And Denise, thank you so much for the work that you're doing in the world. Thank you for recognizing the beauty in yourself and the people around you and teaching them how to recognize that beauty, how to recognize the that we are light beings, that we are full and filled with love. And thank you for being that stand and being a champion. And no matter what happens, continuing to, to move forward and share that message and just being that divine channel. I appreciate who you are. Thank you. I love what you're doing because you're the a few generations behind me and we need lots more just like you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Thank you so much. Have the best day ever and we look forward to helping you get your message out to more people and making a bigger impact. Thank you. Awesome. Take care.